Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Vitamin D. I'm Evangelist Kendall Lingham. I will be your pilot today um, and your teacher as we've been studying Solomon, uh, the man um, known as the man who was wise, the wisest man on earth to some of us. Amen. So I'm just going to get into prayer and then we're going to get back into our study. I have a lot to go over. We're going to do a quick review for those of you who are joining us and missed the last lesson. You're welcome to go on to Nehemiah's website and look at the previous week's vitamin D to catch up. We're going to do a brief overview and then we're going to get into today's lesson. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this Bible study. We thank you for your spirit that gives us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. We ask that everybody who is on here gets knowledge, wisdom, and understanding by your spirit. Let us grow in your grace. Let us grow in your mercy. And let us grow in a relationship closer to you as we study your holy, inspired, and divine word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Welcome again to Vitamin D. I am so glad you joined us today. Um, we're going to review Solomon. Um, last week, we talked about Solomon, and, and some of you remember, we talked about his name. His name, it was also Jedediah. He was given that by the prophet Nathan, and that meant beloved of God. Also, Solomon means peaceable, so we know that he was beloved and a peaceable man of God. And if you notice, throughout his 40-year reign, there was peace for the children of Israel for his complete 40 years of reign. Also, we noticed that his parents, David and Bathsheba, he was the second son to David and Bathsheba, David's 10th um, child overall, but they were messed up, right? And somebody say, we all a little bit messed up, but God uses messed up people to do great things. Another thing that we really learned about was his purpose. Solomon was charged to build the temple of God. Before, uh, before they had the temple, they would, uh, Moses, if you remember in the wilderness, they would worship God in the tabernacle. And then God said, you know, I'm going to have a temple one day. David wanted to build it for him, but because he had blood on his hands, he said, you can't do that for me, but your son Solomon will. Then we have Solomon. Once he comes onto the picture, the Lord asks him, which, once he's appointed king, God asks him, what can I do for you? And instead of asking for uh, everything else in the world, he asked for wisdom or discernment to do God's uh, justice with his people and to judge righteously. Amen. We know that Solomon wrote uh, four of the five poetic books in the Bible, and that's what we studied so far. So now we're going to get into our lesson today, and we're talking about, we, were, we left off where Solomon, amen, had had asked God for wisdom, and not only did God grant him that, God granted him everything else, you know. He granted him prosperity. He granted him um, people that would serve him. He granted him the wisdom and knowledge, not only that, but to write 3,000 Proverbs, 1,005 Psalms, and one-third of those we have in the book of Proverbs. Um, we also know, amen, that he, that he um, contributed to the book of Psalms, 1,005 songs total that he wrote, but he didn't write all the songs, but we have some of his writing. So he did a lot of work with, with just one man. Just, just, just tell yourself, you can do a lot of things if you trust God. Amen. So he's building the temple. This is the first. Now, you need to notice this. This is the first of three temples. Solomon's is the first, Zerubbabel's is the second, and King Herod's is the third of these um, um, enormous temples to serve God. Now, as we notice, it took um, Solomon seven years. I'm just going to paraphrase. I don't want to read all the scriptures on it, but it took him seven years to build the house of God. Notice that he didn't build his own house first. He built God's house first. And that took him seven years, and then it took him 13 years to build his own house. So uh, there's an order um, that God requires, too. He requires us to serve him first, right? The Bible says in, in Proverbs chapter 3 that we're supposed to bring our first fruits. We're supposed to enter into his gates, what, first with thanking God. We need to uh, serve God first and do what he wants us to do, and then he's going to take care of everything else. Does that make sense? All right, let's get into some scripture here, because I don't want to get too far ahead, but we're going to be starting out here in the book of Kings, 
is where um, Kings and Chronicles is where Solomon is mainly in. So we're in the book of First Kings, and I want you to turn to chapter, where am I at? Chapter 9. We're going to be First Kings chapter 9. And this is talking about the second appearance to Solomon. God appeared to him one time, and this is the second time he's appearing to him, amen, and then asking him, you know, a second question. He's asking Solomon, um, he, he said, what shall I give you this time? So we're in 1 Kings chapter 9, verses, um, let's, let's start at verse 1. So, that, so Solomon finished building the temple of the Lord as well as the royal palace. He completed everything he had planned to do. Then the Lord appeared to Solomon a second time, as he had done before in Gibeon. The Lord said to him, I have heard your prayer and your petition. I have set this temple apart to be holy. This place you have built where my name will be honored forever. I will always watch over it, for it is dear to my heart. Now notice here. Um, the Lord tells him, this is, this, is, this is a temple, and what is it built for? It's built to honor the name of the Lord. Turn back with me to um, 1 Kings chapter 5, and we're going to read verse 5. 1 Kings chapter 5, and we're going to read verse 5. Because we want to know why, why, why did he build the temple? So it says, 1 Kings chapter 5 says, so I am I'm planning to build a temple to honor the name of the Lord. We're going to stop right there. The whole temple was built just to honor God. We've got to realize in the body of Christ, amen, our temples are for God's glory. It's for his honor. And everything we say and do is supposed to be glorifying God. Now, when we look down, um, when we look at Second Chronicles, this is where we get a little bit deeper. Second Chronicles 7, verses 12 through 22. This is Solomon uh, praying to God. This is part of his prayer. It's also in Kings chapter 9. But we get that scripture in 7, uh, verse 14, where it says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. So we're talking about what happens when the people of God turn away from God. And God gives the answer right here. He says, you, you, you've got to repent. Solomon, Solomon, Solomon uh, uh, asked God for the remedy. Everything that we do has to do with serving the Lord. And when we get off a track, the Bible requires us to repent. That means change our mind, change our hearts, and change our actions. Tell somebody I need to change my actions and my mind and my heart if I really have true repentance. Amen. So Solomon gets this request of the Lord, and this helps us to see what we do when we mess up. Amen. Let's get, let's get deeper into this. I don't want to get too far ahead. So uh, we read that. God gives, oh, this is a good point. We need to know this. Now write this down or hashtag it, put it on the screen. God always gives warning before destruction. Do you remember what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah? Amen. Abraham knew that Sodom and Gomorrah, God was going to destroy it. He even interceded because he said, hey, man, if you have uh, uh, 50, you know, righteous men, will you, will you destroy? He got, I think, got up to 50. And then he got all the way down, I think, to like five. And there weren't even five righteous men in there or women. And God, God said, I'll do this for you. I'm going to send a warning to your nephew Lot and his family and get them to leave before I destroy it. And they got out there by the, as they, as they say, the hair, the, the hair, the, the chinny chin chin, right? But Lot's wife looked back, but God gave him the warning. He says, go and don't look back. Amen. Remember the plagues in Egypt, right? Amen. God sent warning. He said, look, go tell Pharaoh this is going to happen. You know, if he doesn't let my people go. And he got up to the 10th plague. And then the final one, he said, look, I'm going to kill the firstborn of every male-born child. And if you are uh, one of my children, you need to give me a lamb without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. Kill it, amen, and put the blood over the doorpost. Amen. Otherwise, the angel of death is going to strike you too. 
God is specific with his commands. We serve a God that is specific. And Solomon had specifics on what he was to do as his purpose, amen, of building the temple. And after he had built it, amen, he, he, he built his own house. It took him twice as long to build that. And then he, 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 he uh, uh, galvanized Israel and made them a strong military camp. He put governors over certain sections, man. I mean, he had this. He was balling. He, he not only did that, but he had tons of, of money and wealth and jewelry. So, so Solomon, amen, the only problem is he started to let that stuff get to his head. We cannot let, amen, wealth and fame and money, amen, cause us to get away from God. Amen. Tell somebody, don't let money cause you to get a big head for yourself. Because if it wasn't for God, amen, through all blessings come through him. Every good gift and every perfect gift, James says, comes from above. So Solomon's sin, amen, let's look at his sin because this is where we talked about last week. You, God forgives your sin, but the consequences remain, right? Your sin will find you out. What you sow, you shall reap, right? All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We know there's nobody perfect. Neither, neither was Solomon, and he had jacked up parents, and that jacked him up too. So sometimes you got to reverse that generational curse. So Solomon's a sin against God. We, we're in 1 Kings chapter 10 and 11. In chapter 10, uh, this is how Solomon appeared to men. Notice that. Read that for yourself. This is, amen, they, they seen him like they seen King Saul. He was as big, uh, you know, he, he, was, he was powerful. He had wealth. He had money. Men look at the outside of things. But God, in chapter 11, this is how God, amen, seen Solomon. God looks at the heart, just like he looked at David's, just like he looked at Jonathan's heart. We've got to recognize, we've got to uh, have a, a, a heart condition check. We've got to have a checkup on our heart daily, right? Because the Bible tells us, amen, the Lord will search your heart. He said, create in me a clean heart, David said. We've got to have a clean heart every day. So what, so, so what does, the, uh, does, does it say about people's opinion and God's. Well, when it comes to people's opinion, you shouldn't be trying to please people. You should be pleasing God. Amen. That's what Jesus said. I got to be about my father's business and not about my own business. Solomon, he, he strayed away from that. He started out good like a flash in the pan. But how many of you know a flash in the pan don't win the race? It's not how you start out, but it's how you finish. Most of us have been given a bad deck to start out with. But if you finish strong, that's what really counts. If you start out good in the race, but you still end up not finishing the race, what good is that? Come on here, somebody. So we see, so we see that. So we want to remember that. Solomon started to please uh, men and, and, and women. Now, let's look at here. It says, uh, let's, let's go to 2 Chronicles uh, chapter 2, verses uh, 9 and 8. And if you remember, it's in, it's in 1 Kings chapter 2. So they, they have parallel stories. And this is the Queen of Sheba, okay? The Queen of Sheba uh, gives Solomon some, some good advice, but he doesn't take heed to it. Amen? We're going to 2 Chronicles, excuse me, chapter 9 and verse 8, starting at verse 8. So it says, um, praise the Lord your God for, this is the Queen of Sheba talking to Solomon, who delights in in you and has placed you on the throne as king to rule for him. Not for himself, but for him. Because God loves Israel. Why did he do it? Because he loves us. God puts us in position of power because he loves us and wants us to prosper and desires the kingdom to last forever. God, God's kingdom does last forever. Amen. And he wants you to have a legacy that lasts forever. But you have to follow his laws and commandments. It reads further on. It says, he has made you king over them so you can rule with justice and righteousness. Don't miss that. Justice and righteousness. In other words, he wants him to do justly and right before the people, not to do his own thing. Amen. So this was the advice of the queen of Sheba. Uh. So does, does God anoint officials to, the question is, this is the question for you all to answer, does God anoint officials to do what they want or for furthering his kingdom? Well, of course, it's to further his kingdom. God does not promote people, amen, even in the White House, in Congress, um, locally, 
uh, even on your job. He does not promote you to, to, to not be an influence on your environment, to be an influence on the atmosphere, amen, to further the kingdom of God, as we see here with Solomon. Amen. Psalm 100 tells us to serve the Lord with gladness. If you remember in 1 Timothy 1.12, Paul said he counted me faithful, putting me in the ministry. Amen. We, we've got to recognize that God wants us to be faithful. Amen. He, if he trusts you with something, much is given, much is required. Amen. He expects the return on his investment. Now, um, now, not, now, when we don't follow his instructions, um, we have that, what we call sin. We miss the mark. Amen. That's why God gives qualifications for certain positions. Tell somebody God gives qualifications for certain positions. Amen. In, as, as for a king, if, if we turn over to Deuteronomy chapter uh, 17, and we're going to go to verses 14 and 17, Deuteronomy Give me a second here. I'll give you a second. 17, verses 14 through 17. I'm reading out a new living. It says, you are about to enter the land the Lord your God has given you. When you take it over and settle there, now listen, this is the qualifications for the king. You may think we should select a king to rule over us like the other nations around us. Verse 15. If this happens, be sure to select as king the man the Lord your God chooses. So it has to be someone that God chooses, not the people. Amen? You must appoint a fellow Israelite. He may not be a foreigner. Amen? God, God and this is all through the Bible. Ezra will tell you, don't, we don't want foreigners. We ain't trying to intermingle. So get this. This is the qualifications. Verse 16, the king must not build up a large stable of horses for himself or send his people to Egypt to buy horses. For the Lord has told you, you must never return to Egypt. Don't go back. So why are you looking back? Tell somebody, I'm not going back to Egypt. Verse 17, the king must not take many wives. Oh, yeah, come on here. For himself, Solomon did the exact opposite. We're going to get into that. Because they will turn, what, his heart away from the Lord. And he must not accumulate large amounts of wealth in silver and gold for himself. Now that, now that says it right there. This is what Solomon did. He did the exact opposite. God said, don't do it. He turns around and what does he do? He gets, he, he gets a thousand wives and concubines. Amen. And all these, a lot of these are foreigners. And he started setting up uh, false idol gods and letting them worship. And then he worshiped them too. And they did exactly what the Lord said, turned his heart away. So, so you see how Solomon let other people influence him. He got sidetracked. Tell somebody, I'm not getting sidetracked. Amen. I was like, I got to have my eyes set like flint. Amen. We, we going all the way. I'm sticking with Jesus. Amen. So, so and, and like I said before, God requires qualification. If you don't believe me, read 1 Timothy chapter 3. That gives you requirements for deacons and bishops or pastors in the church. God has a certain, amen, you just, you just can't lay hands on anybody and say, oh, well, you're going to be the pastor or you're going to be the bishop. No, you can't anoint yourself. God has to call you. Amen. And other people have to bear record that God called you. Come on here. Amen. So God, God will uh, call you, he will appoint you, and he will anoint you. Amen. Amen. So in 1 Kings chapter 10, let me get my book here so I don't, I don't get ahead. I can't read all the scriptures because we're short on time. Amen. But we find, amen, in 1 Kings, Solomon breaks everything that we just read. 1 Kings chapter 10 and 26. He shall not multiply horses to himself. He multiplied horses to himself. The second thing he did, and, and it says, nor cause the people to return to Egypt, that he should multiply horses. We just read that in Deuteronomy. In 1 Kings 10 and 20 through 29, he did, the, he did the opposite. And the third thing he did, it says, Neither shall he multiply wives to himself, that his heart uh, turn not away. 1 Kings 11 and 3. He had, amen, a thousand wives and concubines total. He did the complete opposite. I'm not doing the opposite of what God says. Come on in, somebody. And the fourth thing he did, neither shall he greatly multiply to himself silver and gold. That's in 1 Kings 10, 14, 23, and 27. 
all of these things. It says Solomon had disobeyed God in all these areas. Also in Deuteronomy, uh, like I said, in Deuteronomy chapter 17, that was the requirement for a king. So when God gives requirements, we need to follow them. Amen? Amen. Got about 10 minutes left. Let's, uh, we're going to move on and get to the conclusion of Solomon. I hope this is blessing somebody. These character studies, you know, you really get to look at human beings just like us. And they struggled with sin and they messed up, but God still delivered. God still forgave, but the consequences still remain. Amen. So the results of, of Solomon's sin uh, are in 1 Kings chapter 11. Amen. And, and verses 9 through 13 and 31. God, uh, let, let's actually go there real quick. 1 Kings uh, chapter 11. We're going we're gonna to jump to that one real quick, and then we're going to sum this up. 1 Kings chapter 11, verses 9, amen, through 13. So we want to notice in this verse, in verse 9, amen, when you mess up, God gets angry, amen. It says his anger lasts but for a moment, his favor is forever, but that moment wiped out a whole generation in the wilderness, Amen. It says in verse 9, it says, the Lord was very angry with Solomon. He wasn't just angry, he was, he was staunch mad, a very angry. For his heart had turned away from the Lord and the God of Israel who had appeared to him twice. Amen. He appeared to him twice, asking him, what shall he do for him? And he said, if you do all of this, if you follow my commandments, you're going to have your kingdom established forever. Now let's look, amen, at, at, at verse 11. So now the Lord said to him, since you have not kept my covenant and have disobeyed my decrees, I will surely tear the kingdom away from you and give it to one of your servants. And that's exactly what he did. The kingdom, amen, it, it was, it was under, under Solomon, it stayed together. But once he had his son, Rehoboam, amen, and then Jer Jer Jeroboam, um, he ended up taking ten of the tribes and Rehoboam had two. And that's what the promise is in the rest of this chapter. Let's skip down to verse 31 because I'm short on time. But verse 31, it says, it says, Then he said to Jeroboam, Take ten of these pieces, for this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I'm about to tear the kingdom from the hand of Solomon, and I will give ten tribes to you. But I will leave him with one tribe for the sake of my servant David, and for the sake of Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of the tribes of Israel. So it was two, he ended up leaving Judah and Benjamin, which became one tribe. That's why it says one tribe there. So let's not get sidetracked off of that. He's like, you, you said two tribes, and it says one there. Well, yeah, the two became one. Come on here, somebody. Amen. So because of his sin, that's what happened. He lost the kingdom. So now we're, we're moving over here to the end of Solomon's life. So Solomon, amen, he ends up dying. He reigned for 40 years. He lived to be 60. And now what's important um, about this is what the, the New Testament. You always want to connect the Testaments to get the full teaching of the Bible. A lot of us just deal with one Testament. You don't get the full teaching. We got to see what the New Testament says about Solomon. So amen, we're going we're gonna to turn to in our Bibles in Matthew chapter 12, verses 42. Amen. Matthew 12, 42. I got this already up on my, on my written Bible. Got, got too many papers up here, y'all, to forgive me. But we're going to Matthew 12, 40, see if we can do this. Okay. Matthew 12, 42, and it says, now, this is talking about the Queen of Sheba. We remember we just talked about her, how she came from the south to hear about Solomon's wisdom and everything. And Jesus is, is referring to her. The queen of the south, it says, she'll rise up in the judgment with this generation, and she'll condemn it. For she came from the uttermost or the farthest, uh, remotest parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, Jesus is saying, look, behold, a greater than Solomon is here. Now, we always talk about that Solomon was the wisest man on earth. I beg to differ. Jesus was the wisest because he is wisdom himself. Amen. He is complete and total wisdom. Amen. Let's, let, if you go to Colossians chapter 2, verse 3, we're going to go there real quick just so, you, just so uh, man, you, I can prove what I'm saying. Colossians 2, amen, verses, uh, Colossians chapter 2, verses 3. And I'm pulling it up here on my digital 
2, verse 3. And the Bible reads in the New Living Translation, it says, In him lie hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. That's talking about Jesus. All the, uh, all the wisdom, amen, all the consolation, you know, in Hebrews chapter 11, it says, by faith, we understand that the worlds were framed just by the word of God. That's, Jesus was in the beginning, John chapter 1, and in Genesis chapter 1, all things were made by him and for him. And how did he do it? With his divine wisdom, amen. So we must realize that Jesus is saying, look, amen, you thought Solomon was all that in a bag of chips of Frito-Lay, you know, some hot sauce on top. He ain't nothing compared to me. Come on here, somebody. Amen. So the queen of Sheba came as far to witness, amen, get this, the wisdom of Solomon, while we have Christ among us and his word in our hand. Jesus Christ is greater than Solomon. Say that. Jesus said so, and that is a fact. I just proved it in the Bible. Now, the second thing we want to recognize here with Jesus is Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. That's in John 10, 23. You can go there, amen. It says, there Jesus walked where the Sanhedrin held their proceedings. The porch was a place of judgment in Solomon's day. Amen. They would judge people there on, that, uh, on Solomon's porch. Jesus was in the temple, get this, walking, meditating, available. This is the lesson in the scripture. Jesus is available whenever you need him. Amen. We think that he's far off whatever. No, he's right there. He said he'll never leave us nor forsake us. All you got to do is call upon the name of the Lord. That's why he's greater than Solomon. Solomon, amen, even though he judged or whatever, administered justice, and, 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 and the people had to come to him to administer justice, I was like, Jesus administers justice, amen, right in your heart. Amen. He, he's everywhere all the time be, uh, via the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now, the early church, get this, another good fact about Solomon's porch. We're still talking about Solomon in Acts 5, 12. Get this, Peter preached there. Amen. Ananias and Sapphira died there. Peter preached there, but Ananias and Sapphira died there. See, judgment can come anywhere at any time. Amen. The Holy Spirit, amen, convicted them for their lie. They said they sold some land, amen, and then they're going to be like uh, Barnabas and, and give a little bit of the money and then try to look good in front of the people. Like I said before, are we trying to please God or are we trying to please man? Amen. And the, the Holy Spirit killed them right on the spot. So you can't play around with the judgment of God. It can come quick. It can come later. But it's coming. Amen. And the last thing I want you to get out of this is, is Solomon in all his glory was arrayed. Amen. Was not, the Bible says, arrayed as one of these in Matthew 6. And 29, let's turn there real quick. I'm going to flip in my regular Bible. Here we go to Matthew chapter 6, and we're winding up here. All right. Matthew 6 and 29. All right. It says, I'm in five. Excuse me. Flip one more over. 6 and 29. All right. Here we go. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed or dressed like one of these. Jesus was talking about the lilies in the valley. We worry about what we're going to eat, what we're going to drink, you know, what we're going to wear and all this other stuff and how the bill's going to get paid. And, and Jesus said, look, the lilies, hey amen, they don't worry about that and they get fed. The birds get fed. They flying around twittering and, and taking bird baths all day and they ain't worried about nothing. God takes care of them. And you made in his image, after his likeness, for his glory. Don't you think he's going to take care of you even better than Solomon is what he's saying here? Come on here. That's good news. The Lord looks out for his children. Amen. So, so we're winding up and I want to review this because when you study something, you need to retain the stuff. So we, we, we know that uh, Solomon, amen, even though he was a wise man, he made mistakes. Tell somebody it's okay to make mistakes, but you got to repent and get back on track with God. Amen. The Lord, amen, the Lord God gives and takes away as he wills. He gave Solomon the charge to build the temple. Amen. He was charged to build that temple. But how many of you know, amen, that was a temporary temple? Now our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. The Bible tells us if we destroy this temple, God's going to destroy us. Amen. So you got to, amen, not just physically, but spiritually be nurtured in the word of God and build this temple up. Because if you take care of this temple, the physical temple, your house, wherever you're at, God's going to take care of that. Amen. The next thing we want to remember from this lesson is all great characters were born in the endemic race. 
Therefore, we should not expect perfection. Don't be thinking you, uh, amen, somebody has to be perfect because they don't. Nobody's perfect. Not for all of sin, the Bible says, that's in uh, Romans 3.23, and come short of the glory of God. No one's perfect. But amen, God will perfect you in his likeness. You know, we were born to be conformed to the image of Christ. Also, amen, remember that God grants wisdom, James 1 and 5. If you like it, he just says, ask, and he gives it freely. Jesus was the epitome and is wisdom itself, amen. And, and, and finally, amen, I got a couple more here. God gives us more than we expect and deserve. God gave Solomon all that other stuff, but he let it, let it get a big head. He got a big head. Tell somebody there's no room for pride in God, amen. He said he resisted the proud but gave it grace unto the humble. Praise his name. And Solomon is a good example that riches and things do not make a person happy. That's why we study in Ecclesiastes. Amen. No, no riches or anything in this world can satisfy you like Jesus. Not even Snickers or, or Pepsi or Coke, none of that stuff. Amen. And, and, and the last thing we want to remember, and I'm done, the Lord judges all, the great as well as the small. Jesus is our advocate, our Savior, who saves us from judgment uh, not the consequences of sin, like we said before. Solomon's consequences, he, he, he lost his kingdom, amen, and it was split because he lost focus of God. So let's remember from Solomon, we got to stay focused on God and not let stuff get us off focus, amen? Amen. Well, I enjoyed this. Pastor West will be running this next week. Look for me. I'm going to be doing a teaching on the New Testament. We're going to do a survey of the New Testament. I'm excited. I hope you're excited. If you've ever wanted to study just the books of the New Testament, how they came together, the Gospels, the Synoptic ones, the Epistles of Paul, the General Epistles, the Book of Acts, we're just going to give a general outline of that, but I want to walk us through that and get a good understanding and appreciation of the New Testament. Amen? Let's pray out, man, and we, we pray that you've been blessed by this Bible study in vitamin D. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you for this study of Solomon, Lord, of his life, amen, of everything he did and didn't do, his consequences, Lord, and we remember that, amen, he got off track, God, but you said in your word, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then you would hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. So we repent, amen, right now if we got off track. Whoever's watching, you can repent. Ask Jesus Christ into your life. He forgives you and receive the gift and the power of the Holy Ghost to do right. We love you today. We thank you for this message, Lord. May it bless everyone who hears us and watches. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. All right, we're done. I love you. God bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his wonderful countenance upon you and give you peace in Jesus' name. Until next time, my friends, God bless you and have a blessed week.